Hello, I'm Dr. Uma. I'm one of the doctors here. How would you like to be addressed? Uh, you could call me Mrs. Fonda. Mrs. Fonda, I believe that you've come here to discuss some concerns about your daughter. Before we proceed, may I please confirm her name and age? Yeah, she's Margaret and her age is 27. Sure. Uh, could you tell me more about your concerns? Well, doctor, my daughter is 27, but she has a learning disability and hence her mental age is eight and mm -hmm. she has heavy bleeding during her period. So that really bothers me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry to hear that she's having uh, difficulties. Rest assured, I'm here to help you. Of course, uh, we will always ensure that we are taking the best decisions for her. So I need to ask you a few questions. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. When you say the bleeding is heavy, could you describe uh, in a little more detail? Yeah, the bleeding lasts for around eight days and mm -hmm. she has to use around five to six pads per day. It's quite mm -hmm. heavy. So and it, she's irritable during her period. So it's, it's really difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. So sorry to hear that. When did the period start at all? At the age of 14. And is it regular? Yes. Any bleeding in between periods? No, I don't think so. Also about this learning disability, could you tell me more? Well, she's able to do her uh, routine household chores like her brushing or bathing or even feeding. But when she gets her period, she needs me for everything. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand it can be difficult. Uh, did she have any uh, treatment uh, so far for the bleeding? Yes, the GP had given her some tablets, some acid, uh, two tablets. And yeah. uh, yes, uh, she, uh, after that, she was on the pill, combined mm -hmm. pill, and she did respond to the pills. But now mm -hmm. again, she's having heavy bleeding despite being on the pill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was there any coil inserted in the womb ever? No, never. Any tests or scans, biopsies uh, done in the past? No. Mm -hmm. Has she been having any weakness or tiredness, breathlessness? No breathlessness, but she is uh, weak, I would say. All right. Uh, was she detected to have low hemoglobins or any iron or uh, blood transfusions ever required? Uh, no. Okay. Has she always been under your care and supervision? Yes. And does she have any uh, medical problems? No. Any surgeries at all? No. What about her weight for height ratio? 23. I'm sorry to ask this, but we really need to confirm this in every case. Has she ever been sexually active? No. Uh, and in the future, what will be the living arrangements? Will, it, will she continue to stay with you? Yes, she would. Okay, sorry to ask this once again, really. Um, any smoking? No, she doesn't. Uh, any alcohol or drug abuse? No. Okay. And does she have any vocational training? Oh, uh, she does painting. Okay. Uh, any family history of cancer at all? No. Any personal or family history of clots? No. Uh, has she undergone her routine pap smears? Not, not, not so far. Okay, and uh, do you have a lasting power of attorney or a court appointed deputy power? Oh, uh, no. Uh, thank you for all this uh, information. Uh, coming to her concerns, it seems that she's suffering from uh, heavy menstrual bleeding, which is not currently responding to any medical treatments. The causes for this could be either unknown or because of some pathology such as a fibroid uh, in the womb or thickening of the lining of the womb or any grape-like projection into the womb, which is referred to as polyp, uh, abnormally located lining of the womb, uh, which could be the endometriosis, which is its place outside the womb or adenomyosis, where it is within the muscle layer of the womb. And in rare cases, and I'm not trying to scare you by saying this, it could even be sometimes rarely cancer. Uh, but the treatment for each of these conditions is quite different and we must tailor the treatment to the condition. 
So in all these cases, oh, uh, doctor, would... but uh, I was hoping for a hysterectomy actually because I this all this is scary. Mm, y yes, but in each individual case, we would need to of course examine, investigate further, and find out why she may not be responding to the medicine. And according to the problem that we are encountering, the management options also quite differ. If I may um, tell you what those options are. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So initially it would involve basic investigations like doing her hemoglobin and an ultrasound uh, after an examination. In her case, of course, examination may be difficult. Uh, nonetheless, if the scan shows any thickened line, we may have to offer a biopsy to rule out an abnormal thickening in the lining of the womb or even cancer. And uh, this or any other pathology detected, we would have to treat accordingly. So if all investigations are normal, that means we don't find a cause or in even cases of endometriosis or adenomyosis, usually the next proposed treatment is to go for a coil, which we call as Mirana to be inserted inside the womb. This contains a hormone which thins out the lining of the womb. If a polyp is found, then removal of the polyp using a camera from below uh, under anesthesia would be ideal. And if it's a precancerous or a cancerous uh, change, then a hysterectomy may be the next uh, appropriate uh, step. So we suggest further evaluation. And in most cases, a simple placement of the Mirana might be enough to uh, control heavy menstrual bleeding if none of these pathologies are uh, found. This could help us avoid major surgery and associated risks like anesthesia, pain, infection, bleeding, injury to internal organs like the bladder, bowel, uh, and blood vessels. Uh, what do you think about uh, the proposed treatment here? Well, doctor, I was really hoping to be uh, to have a hysterectomy done for her because uh, I'm, I'm worried she may be abused sexually, you know. I can see that uh, you're looking out for her, but uh, unfortunately, removal of the womb still would not ensure the risk of abuse is eliminated. The only way we could do that is by ensuring her safety wherever she's being cared for. Um, also, prior to taking any decisions for her, we will be involving our consultant and a team of specialist doctors. We would try as much as possible to explain in the simplest language, even with the use of diagrams, pictures, uh, literature, to try and uh, make her understand. And if it is determined she has any capacity at all, we would consider her consent. If we deem that she's not able to understand the implications, in that case, we must proceed in her best interest for treatment with the placement of the coil for heavy menstrual bleeding, you would also be a part of the best interest meeting and you can present your views. If all is agreed and if you wish, you may sign the consent form for uh, the consultant will sign that decisions are in her best interest. Okay. Doctor, but I'm her mother, so I know what's best for her. Um, I'm sorry to have to say, we are required to do the safest and the least restrictive treatment for her, which uh, will be good for her. So if there is any disagreement uh, between you and uh, the best interest uh, meeting decision, then we may have to decide this in court after taking legal advice. Oh, this is so upsetting, doctor. I'm not happy. Uh, I'm not trying to upset you, Mrs. Fonda, but as doctors, we are legally and ethically bound to carry out the best medical treatment for her. I hope you can understand that. If you have any other questions. No questions. Uh, thank you so much. I will give you some written information about this and we can meet up further and escalate this to my consultant, of course, and I'll document this meeting. Okay, all right. Thank you.